Well, today on Nation, a window cleaners podcast, we are going to go over the lessons that were learned in 2023. It's the end of the year, so hopefully you're just chilling. Hopefully you are resetting your mind, but either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy the podcast. We've been doing this for like, you know, six and a half years. So there's tons of content to go back, follow up. But today we're talking about the lessons that we learned in 2023. So if you're listening to this when this show is halfway new, it is the end of 2023. And we got a lot of lessons that we kind of learned and picked up and things that we discovered through the year. And even if you haven't had your business the entire year, there's some things that you could definitely learn from it. And for those of you who have had business for a while, you know that 2023 has been one of those years that uh, has had some interesting times and part of that year has been way different than most years that uh, you've been through. So that's what we're talking about kind of in 2023. And I got a few lessons that I just kind of like threw out there that I figured this year was a learning year for. And to start everything off, everything. I have to say that you have to prepare for silence. You have to be ready for spring to not be what it should be or the start to be what it should be or the world to be what it should be. We got kind of in this groove and 2020 knocked that out, you know, for a lot of us. And since then, there's been a lot of just kind of repetitive. We kind of know what's going on and We were taught again in 2023 from how spring was that when you think spring is starting, it's not necessarily going to start. So with that being said, you have time that you know, say your March or your April or your May, whatever one of your months in your area is that start month is not always the start month. And I'll tell you, this has happened in, I've been doing this for 16 years, but there's been pretty regularly every like five or six years we see this. Um, it's pretty common. It's, it's happens like clockwork. I was hoping this wouldn't happen because of the 2020 like reset type thing that happened, but you know that this spring was incredibly late if you went through anything. Like if your main date is April 1st, you just start going crazy. It didn't happen in April. It didn't happen right away. It actually took some time to kind of come about and Maybe that was like, oh man, this sucks. It's a little bit slower, but we're kind of hanging in there and and waiting for the start. And when it does, your summer was amazing, right? It pushed everything uh, farther out. Your summer was great. Your fall was probably great. You probably didn't have that summer lull. It was just amazing. But spring wasn't awesome. And a lot of people this year really had issue. They really panicked. You could see it in the forums and the Facebook groups and just people I talked to. A lot of people run so lean, they don't prepare for this kind of stuff that when it does happen and it delays like it did, now all of a sudden there's a big issue. And that's where you saw so many people in 2020 have that kind of, you know, I'm I'm going to go do a factory job because I don't know what's going on. They, they, They were so scared of the uncertainty side. They didn't plan for anything. They just were too lean. And they got bit. And that is kind of what you saw happen this spring. A lot of kind of people turning over this spring because of that. Spring just was pushed late. So what do you do to kind of prepare for that? And what it is is have your reserves. Because we're a seasonal business, you should have reserves. Obviously, if you're watching this, it's the last week of the year. It's not the time to build up your reserves. But moving forward, you need to build reserves And that is just like cash on hand and that type of thing. So that if spring comes late, say it's a month late, can you last a month without having that normal income that you would prepare for? So say you have, you know, X amount of dollars, everything's set aside and you think April 1st is the date. It doesn't come. Can you make it another month? Now, some of you, are saving money that just sits there and it is their reserves. It's just your cushion. It makes you feel good. And some of you will run lean the whole year, build the reserves back up. Now you could do either. 
And I always tell people that when you put aside your living money for that, you know, making sure your business runs and you're comfortable to have that even extra, say it does come April 1st, but you had planned for even longer than that. Well, now you just have an awesome budget to go in and get those ads done, to, to push everything and blow that spring up. I and mean, there's no bad part to saving that across there. If you don't have the reserves to make it through there and you do have a delayed spring, well, you know the, the outcome of that. And I'll tell you, uh, traditionally, this 2024, our spring will be normal. It should be back to normal. Hopefully, there's a bunch of other factors, of course, but that's technically where it should be. Another lesson that I learned and I spoke about, and it was one of my probably highest talked about episodes I've done in a long time was raising prices. We found out in 2023 with inflation and the economy and everything else that the way that it is going is that we have to raise prices every year. Now you can think that I'm stupid for this and totally cool, by the way, I don't care. You know, like I, I'm just a dummy who explains some things that I think does not mean you have to think my way. Not at all. You know what's best for your business. Just just things that maybe you can um, take and maybe it helps you see something differently than you may have before. Um, but raising prices every year because of inflation in general has to happen. Inflation has gone so much. We've seen such a big increase in everything from gas to milk to insurance to everything that for those of us that did not raise prices or haven't or somehow think that why would we raise prices you're making so much less now so much less your money's not going farther you're, you're not having that extra money for the ads you're not having the growth you want because you can't reinvest all of those things come through the guy who does the best uh price increases regular runs this thing we're doing like a business, has the best and fastest growth, the strongest growth. These are the guys when you see and go, how are they it been in business for two or three years and they're doing this? How did this guy hit his million dollar a year after three years in business? It doesn't make sense. He's running it like a business. There's a big difference between a job and a business. We talk about that, obviously, you know, the why I don't like door knocking and everything else. But when you look at the whole side of that, one of the big pieces is you have to keep up and grow with inflation still happening and your business growing. And you have no problem when somebody new comes in, keeping them at the price that you're charging currently. But yet the old ones, you have some just big problem with making them the same price. So 2023 helped us really learn that because it hit so hard this year and so fast that a lot of us went, oh man, like, then I'm not even making money anymore doing this. I've had people say that. I've had people say, well, you know what? We're just, we're doing what we did, but our growth is just like very minimal, like, you know, this year. Is it is it the growth that is your numbers? Or are you seeing that everything's so expensive that you're not able to do the things you were doing in business? You're like, well, I grew this year, but I mean, everything's so expensive. It's hard for me. Well, you grew maybe by customers or gross, but you didn't increase prices. So yeah, you're making less this year than you did last year because of inflation. Everything went up. You can't do the ads you did last year on last year's money. You have to do it on this year's money. And if you didn't raise prices, now's your chance. Last week of the year is the last thing. Once January 1st comes, everybody gets that 2% above inflation raise. I'm telling you, it's one of those things like the dentist clothes that I feel like as much as I can just babble and you guys listen, which is phenomenal, the reason I exist in the world, but I feel like there's a certain things that I have maybe been able to somehow, even in the slightest, assist companies in growing, and that is absolutely one of them, and it is growth from raising prices and the dentist clothes. Those two are kind of up there in people making the biggest changes in people. So hopefully you do that. 2024 is right here. So, uh, But I definitely found that out in 2023. And by the way, uh, for what I do as a rep, obviously they tell us price increases, like the prices of aluminum goes up. So then the ladders go up and it's a whole thing. But in the general side of it, we're talking services and where money is in general. So something big. 2023 also really showed us that uh, turnover is a thing. A lot of people, 
Again, like the 2020 year, 2020 year, people say, man, I have more new guys than ever before. And I'm one of those people that get blamed for that all the time. They go, well, you're the one teaching people how to, yep, just like you learned. Just like there was a point that everybody didn't know what they were doing and they learned. Are there more window cleaners now than ever? Or are there more pressure washers now than ever? No, there's really not. Very minimal. And the reason it looks like there's more or, you know, to you or in your area and you go, oh yeah, there's so much. I see them all the time. That's because the newer business owner that's coming in, the turnover happens. The old guys go out. The guys that just drove around in a white truck with no, you know, logos and and carbon copy forms and, you know, didn't have uniform, just did their thing. Those guys are retiring, moving on, being done. The new guy is so much more smart in business, which as somebody like you who's been in business, you want to make sure that you're always staying there too. Turnover is big, but it's not that there's more companies. They're smarter companies. You're seeing them now because they have logoed and lettered vehicles and they have wraps and they got amazing branding and great logos and um, amazing presence uh, digitally. They have all of that and you're like, oh man, these guys are all, they're all new. I see them everywhere. Well, you see them everywhere now because it's a different company. It's a company that knows it needs to be seen and you happen to be seeing it. So don't be scared of that. Just understand that 2023 was one of those years like 2020 that everybody's like, everybody's being a window. Well, yeah. But as many new people as came in the industry were people leaving the industry to go get factory jobs. You just happen to see all the new people. You see a lot more of the comments, a lot more of the whatevers, and you're talking to people and all those little things. It's not that there are more. It's just that you're seeing them more. Turnover is a real thing. Another one I just touched on is digital presence. If there ever has been a year where we have been shown basically that the digital presence is as important as it should be is 2023. And the big thing is, is that we're farther away now than ever from the yellow book days. We're farther away now than all of those old medias that we used to advertise on. And now the digital age is stronger than ever has. Look at the numbers and how much people are advertising with digital marketing versus actual, like physical marketing. It's huge. And you, as a company, need to be on top of that. Like, it has to be something. You have to, even if you're young and you don't like Facebook or use it, it's a great platform. Maybe you don't understand Google Ads. Learn it. Maybe you don't understand SEO or you're scared of SEO companies. You know I talk about SEO companies all the time because so many of you have been burned by crappy ones that you have to find a good one. You have to. Um, If you don't understand that side of it, it doesn't mean don't do it. It means learn it. It's the reason why me, I can preach on on SEO and um, talk about ads and everything else. I've had SEO guys. I've paid SEO companies. This is not something that I would even do on my own. You know, Facebook ads. I've used Facebook ads. We've talked about Facebook ads on here and guys that run Facebook ad programs. Those guys exist because it is difficult. But the more difficult something is, the more beneficial it is to surround yourself with somebody, but the less likely somebody else is doing it. If it's easy, everyone does it. It's like route sales. They are talking to window cleaners all the time because some guy who says, I'm going to clean windows for beer money, goes, walks around stores and asks, goes to the next door at like, because of that, they always get people. If you find a store that's off the beaten path, it's, it's out of the way. It's kind of a hidden place. No one ever asks them because it's not easy. The large jobs of property managers, they have somebody. Yes, but they don't get bombarded every week by people because it's hard to find them. It's hard to get a hold of them. It's a harder process, so less people do it. As you guys know, I like to make analogies and quotes and stuff, but uh, one is by uh, uh, JFK, actually said, uh, we choose not to go, or we don't choose to go to the moon because it is easy. We choose to go to the moon because it is hard. We decide to do things 
because it's the challenge. The challenge yields bigger rewards. This is one of them. Digital presence has to be there. If you're not or you think you're lacking, of all things that you need to do or change, it has to be in the digital world. If your website sucks, or you made it with a Wix template, or you, you know, uh, not bashing anybody specifically, I'm just saying I've, out there, you have to look at it and say, okay, this is gonna be my number one way I get stuff. I get people, is this, is this site, is the ads or SEO that gets them to the site and the site is what sells them like the big companies. Again, I know a guy, I know a couple companies like this, but I know companies that are within their first three years, they're hitting a million dollars. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be you know, up to you. It doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be up to you know, any of that stuff. But what it does mean is that in the digital world, you have to be present. So make that big, big change this year in 2024. That's if I can give you anything, that's what I would say. But with that being said, let me digress. I have to do a shameless plug because this is what I do, but uh, I am a sales rep for windowcleaner.com. So every time I'm talking about stuff, and by the way, there's been this big hoopla of uh, some things that, that I got kicked out of or whatever, just from people that kind of don't uh, like me, which is totally cool. Uh, but I do these things, these shows to help people talking about uh, business and structure and stuff, but I sell equipment. So if you ever think that you do get, you know, uh, something from me or you just want to give me like a high five or whatever, uh, I don't do Patreon personally. I just put orders in and it costs you nothing extra. But when you go to put an order in, all you have to do is be like, yo, Jersey, my card is ready and I can put the order in for you. I get credit for it. It costs you nothing extra and it's like a Patreon, but even better. So if I could be your rep, have me in your back pocket for questions or bidding answers or any of that stuff. That's what I do on top of doing what I do here in the media side of things. And I put orders in my number directs 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. So you can call me, text me, all of that stuff. Please let me put your orders in. I love doing that. No order small or big. I verify your address for you. We keep the cards on file and make it so easy. You can put it in your cart and save it. Or you can just be like, Jersey, I need like a gross of Ettore Master 18. Done. Cool. Here's your total. Here's what's going on. It's great. And I love it. So definitely do that. Also going into the new year, if you haven't gotten the subscription, you hear me talk about this all the time. Really take, take a second and just go to the American Window Cleaner magazine, the website. It's awcmag.com. Just go there. It's forward slash sub and get a subscription. It's like 69 bucks for the year, 12 issues, a real paper magazine that comes to your door with stickers and everything else. It's absolutely awesome. Um, and it also helps the industry. Uh, the people are, that are showing you their products, the journalists that write and all of that, it's phenomenal. Uh, do that. Uh, as a side note, also going into 2024, we are looking for more um, journalists. So if you are one that likes to write and you know a thing or two about window cleaning or business in general, uh, hit us up. Uh, the um, email for that is editor at awcmag.com. Let them know that you want to be a writer. We'll do a sample and get you in there. Anyway, all right, shameless plugs done for the day on that. But digital presence, it, it, has, to, it has to be increased. Um, one other thing that we saw I especially saw is the world of CRMs really changed this year with more features and more awesomeness, more integrations than ever before. So I think that you should be doing demos of CRMs to see what one works best for you. A CRM is they they benefit because once you get into that, you stay in that. Because you've done so much work, you're not going to be changing it up. It's so easy to take your info out of one and put it into another. But you have to do demos to see which one works for you. And every one of them has demos. If you're like, man, well, we kind of sit around and I don't know what to do for these next couple. Well, you should be prepping everything. It should be your busy season right now. You should be getting everything ready for when the cleaning stuff comes up. And one of those big things is CRM. So go and do demos. I'm not going to talk CRMs on my side because I 
have been out of the game for so long as far as like doing those and looking at the programs and using it in my own window cleaning business that things have changed so much I don't talk about CRMs because you can go as simple as a uh, QuickBooks all the way up to something as nuts as, you know, uh, Quote.Q and Customer Fact, all those ones that have huge integrations. You know I love Responsibid. Responsibid is sort of like the side where you can do everything you want, but it does so much more than most people do. Um, I mean, there's so many different products. And if you haven't kept your finger on the pulse for CRMs or any of the software stuff, you're doing yourself a disservice. There's a lot of stuff out there, and I hope you do demos. They're free. They're free to do demos. And they will literally walk you through it and go, okay, well, what are you looking to do? Here's what we can do. And yes, they're going to try to sell you something. Obviously, that's how it works, but don't worry about that. It's worth doing the demo. Just so you know, maybe you find something that's absolutely amazing and you switch and it was all worth it, right? So either way, do demos on those CRMs for sure. Um, another lesson that I learned in 2023 was staying state of the art. And this, like every year, there's innovation. There's things that change. But this year we've seen pad holders that didn't really exist. You know, Unger's now come out with them. Uh, Zero's got one. Um, there are new um, uh, sleeves out there. There's just a lot more products now than ever before. And I don't know how many times people will message me throughout the year that are like, hey, uh, this uh, sleeve or whatever, rubber or whatever is junk. Ugh, I hate it. I can't believe it. Yeah, okay. Like The only way for you to find out what you like is to use it. And not everything is going to be better than the thing before it, but you have to find that out. So when people see uh, argue about rubber or they argue about whatever, it's just opinion. But you have to try the stuff to see if it works. With that being said, if your technology side in your state of the art in your window cleaning water fed wasn't in that, strongly suggest water fed. The only downside to water fed is that you have to buy it. If it was free, there wouldn't be a window cleaning company anywhere in the entire world that didn't use water fed. It just makes sense. It's an amazing tool. Amazing tool. It's like stack ladders. They're expensive, but they are amazing, right? If you're not state of the art with your equipment, you're going to be left behind because now in 2024, the things that were in 2023 are now going to be old news. And by the time you get on that bandwagon or try something, it'll be 2024. And it doesn't mean you shouldn't try stuff. It means you just need to at least keep your finger on the pulse. I'll tell you, I'll be very honest with you as anybody who uses me as a rep knows I'm 1000% transparent and honest. I am not a huge rinse bar fan. I don't think... For me, rinse bars are great. I don't like them. I just don't use them. I'd rather have jets. Now, that changes when you get into a scrubber or a pad holder. They have to have rinse bars, and I like those because you're keeping them in the glass anyway. But like a brush, I don't like rinse bars. I also don't like swivel goosenecks. I don't like those. But does that mean that you shouldn't try them? No. They're incredibly popular, and a lot of people like them. But I didn't know I didn't like them until I tried them, right? I didn't know... What I didn't know. And you don't know what you don't know. So when it comes to equipment, and this is in any other industry, people stay state of the art. They always have the newest equipment. They always try things and they know what's going on. And sometimes in window cleaning, we think that we're beyond that and we're just window cleaners and the squeegee's been around forever. Let's not check anything new. But there's a lot of really new and neat stuff out there that's, that's pretty neat. So, yeah. Try some new stuff. Maybe treat yourself. It's all cheap. I mean, in the <clears throat> scheme of things, you know, especially in how much we make per hour, it's pretty relatively inexpensive to try new things. So definitely try new things. 2023, another big, big, big one for me was, again, just being reminded that that building the repeat work is as important. No year like 2023 have there been so many people who have adopted the dentist clothes thing that i made up the name is what i kind of you know made up and it's just so you realize that when you go to the dentist they repeat they schedule your next appointment right away and you've never once been like this dentist is stealing from me that's just way too much he's trying to make more money but who came up with the you have to go to the dentist every six months 
dentist did. Like, the reason it's called a dentist closed is not for any other reason than for your brain to be like, it is okay for me to have people do this regularly. People are so happy when I do this that I want to make them happy all the time. And we're a luxury. So if somebody wants to pay me to do that, absolutely. That's what I do. So repeat business. If you haven't done the dentist close, quick recap for a dentist close. When you're done, you walk somebody through, hey, okay, where everything's done. We want to walk you through the house. Everything look great. Oh my gosh, it looks so amazing. That's light. It's so amazing. I haven't seen my windows clean in so long. This is awesome. Great. Awesome. Okay, well, perfect. So for your next cleaning, um, did you want to do three months or did you want to wait six months? Six months puts you to June 7th, and that would be also kind of this morning appointment if that works for you. A, a dentist closes a confident a, 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 a close. It's a confident close. It's a, uh, I just forgot the word, it's assumptive, assumptive close, right? So you're just basically giving them their option, but yet making them make that decision. And you're going to see 90 to 98% of people. There's always going to be one or two people a year that are like, oh, I'll let you know. I don't know, really. Well, let's. we can always put you in. And, uh, you know, if something changes, we're going to call you the week before anyway, let you know. No, people do not, for the most part, do not reschedule when you call. Because everybody's like, well, I schedule all these people and then I got all these blank space. No, A, use a floater board. But B, no, it doesn't happen. They forget the conversation. They put it in the books. They don't remember what you talked about months later. And by the time that comes, they're like, yeah, I haven't got my windows done in a while. But what we do is something that people like. People have maids come to their house every week or every two weeks. People get their car washed all the time. People get their lawn cut all the time. All of these things happen because there's constant maintenance and window cleaning. For some reason, we just think it's like a once and call us when you need us next. And then by the time they call us, it's been two years and it's really, really dirty. And then you're still out there spending thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars advertising to new people instead of getting the existing people there. Imagine if every customer you had did it like clockwork every six months. Imagine the size of your company. That's all I'm going to say on that one. Uh, build your repeat more than ever 2024 and the last thing that i really took away from 2023 with all the people i talked to and i'm talking hundreds i would say probably thousands of window cleaning companies i've talked to this year that's a safe assumption if not i don't know that it'd be tens i i on a busy monday i will have text conversations with 50 different people, and that's just text, not including the uh, seven hours of phone calls I take on a day, or the you know 13 hours of chat shifts I do on Monday and Tuesday, and the comments on every piece of you know all of that stuff, thousands, if not tens of thousands of customer or uh, uh, window cleaners, and the biggest thing this year is the growing strong. People are so worried about either growing fast or not growing too fast. Instead of, it's not the speed of growth, it's the strength of the company. And of all the people I've worked with this year that have had the most significant growth, I have to say there are a handful, half a dozen maybe, that had big goals money-wise. So grow fast. We want to do this much percentage growth. We want to do this many dollars growth. We want... And we changed that and we said, instead of that, let's focus on strength. Let's do the strength thing because that way then you can build whatever, right? You have to build a foundation strong enough to hold 30 floors if you're going to build the building. You can't have a foundation that can only support two and then try to build on top of it and build the foundation later, right? And every one of them is like, okay, cool, let's do it. We finished 2023 bigger than they could have ever done by just focusing on the goals. They focused on the strength. The strength that you don't think about is your staffing, your presence, your USP, your experience, your scheduling, your all that stuff so that as these new customers just fall into play, it gets done flawlessly. And you find there's so much more room and so much more time because of your allocation of time that you can now go advertise and do all those things. It will happen when you're stronger. And never have I had a year that it just hit me so much about the strength versus the speed of growth than this year. 
There's a lot of pieces to that. This year was also the year of the, you know, TikTok door knocking trend thing that goes on. And and now no other real window cleaners are like, yeah, door knocking makes lots of sense for long-term business. It's these guys that did the door knocking thing and everybody goes, oh, I could have business tomorrow. Okay, that's cool. But the building a business strong takes time. You could be in a growth year that could take you months of building. When people go, well, if I don't door knock, what do I do to get customers? Everything else. Everything else. Well, I mean, yeah, but door knocking, I can have them today. Yeah, you can. You can have a one-time customer that you, you know, go back and forth with price on so low that now it doesn't make sense. You've changed your entire structure to do this one job, and then they don't call you back again because you pressured into the first one. Like, it doesn't make sense. Growth and strength is a long-term play, and it's something you have to do all the time. That's why I'm going to talk about SEO. SEO is a thing like, you know, and again, I bring up SEO. You guys know that we've talked to uh, Monk SEO. He's absolutely by far my favorite uh, dude. Bobby from Monk SEO is always on the show too. Uh, those guys are so rad because they do so amazingly with their SEO. But I always talk about SEO because weekly, if not daily, somebody asks me privately about SEO stuff or growth on that side or advertising or getting customers or if I don't door knock, what do I do? That. You do that. Well, I can't do that. But then you won't grow like you want to. And that's fine too, but understand that. People go, well, it's January. What do I do to get customers? You advertise in in spring and fall. Like right now, you can't go and do SEO. You can't go and be like, yes, I'd like SEO, please. And then you get phone ringing. It's January still. It is an ongoing thing. When you stop doing SEO, you stop accelerating in SEO. It's like sand. You fall back down. 100%. 100%. You have to always be growing strong to grow in general. But either way, I'm off my high horse. You guys know, shameless plug number two, I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. It's what I do. Uh, because of you guys, I've had an amazing year. Uh, just being able to help so many people, uh, some huge, huge, Huge milestones I got to go with uh, to some people. And uh, it is because of the people like you that let me put their orders in that I even exist. So thank you for letting me eat again. Thank you for all the name brand band-aids, shampoo, hair gel, and uh, ramen that you guys have provided me. Um, and I would love to be your rep again. Truly it comes from deep down inside. I want to be able to help you. I want to be able to put your orders in for you. I want to make it easy. And I also love making money by doing it. So obviously, right? Um, but my number directs 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. Call me, text me, email me, whatever. And um, get a subscription. 2024 is going to be huge for the magazine. Uh, we have a new editor in-house. Lacey is amazing. If you haven't had a chance to see or meet or read anything on her, that's uh, absolutely fantastic too. I'm super incredibly lucky for that. Um, and it's going to be a huge year. So go and get your subscription to that. awcmag.com forward slash sub. Again, with the magazine, maybe you are into writing and maybe 2024 is the year that you become a published writer on business and we're looking for it all the time so please let me know uh or let them know uh what you want to do it's editor at awcmag.com just send them a message to, hey tell me more about this editor or more about this journalist thing what can i do um also you guys know i have my youtube channel that I'm trying to put up more content on that side so thank you just for everything i hope you guys had an amazing 2023 here is to 2024 take some time off relax do your thing Make sure that you become the company you want to in 2024. But more importantly, make sure that 2024 is epic.